Hello everyone, and today we're going to talk about whether we can make a car fly by attaching wings to it. We will understand how the wing works in general and why it creates a lift. Then after analyzing all this we will compare it with the cars we have and see if at least in theory an ordinary car with wings can fly. And by the way a lot of you have written in the comments that I need to speak slower, louder and more confidently. So in this video I will try to do it, and if something is wrong with my voice again, please tell me about it in the comments. First, let's understand how the wing works. How is this seemingly amazing lifting force created? Let's start the thing with the shape of the wing. The wing has an irregular shape. The upper part of the wing has a convex shape and the lower part has a straight shape. The wing in this form cuts the air or any environment in which it is located into imaginary two parts. It is interesting that despite the fact that the air was divided into two parts by the wind, which has an irregular shape, still both layers of the air, upper and lower, reaches the other end of the wind in the same amount of time. The upper part will go around the wind in a curve, passing a greater distance, and the lower part of the air will travel a shorter distance in the same time. That means that the upper layers of the air will have a higher speed and the lower layers will have a lower speed. That is, there is a speed difference. Now let's turn to Bernoulli's theorem. According to the theorem, when there is a difference in the speed of the air or any other medium, a new type of pressure will arise, so to speak. It is called dynamic pressure. It can be described by the formula. The density of the medium is multiplied by the speed of movement of the body squared and divided by 2. But in our case this formula is used in an inverted form, from which it follows that the greater the speed of movement of the medium, the lower the pressure. That is, according to this formula, there is a pressure difference above the wind and under the wind. As a result, a lifting force is created. That is, in general, it can be said that the wind makes it possible to fly because its unique shape. But is it really so? Um, not at all. Also, a very important point is how the wind cuts the air. That is, we cannot simply place the wind at any angle to the surface and our body will fly. The wind must have specific angles of inclination so that it works most efficiently. But now there is no point in delving into this topic so much, the main thing to understand is that the wind creates lift because of its unique shape, which causes layer of air to move at different speeds above and below the wind, and this creates lift. Also I must say that the aerodynamics of the object that will fly is very important for this process. If it has better aerodynamics, then in this case it will need a very high speed to take off, and it will not fly for long, because the air will gradually stop it and it will fall down. So let's get to the cars. What problems can arise in the process of preparing the car for flight? As I said at the beginning, the essence of our experiment is simply to fit wings to the car without any other changes in the body or structure of the car. To understand under what conditions a car can take off in general, let's take a look at this car. What was added to it so that it could fly? First, these are the wings themselves, which are securely fixed to the car body. 
Secondly, it is an added small tail, which also has its own small wings and they also create their lifting force and also improve the car handling. Thirdly, large jet accelerators were added to the car, thanks to which the car can quickly take off and maintain its movement in the air. So what are the main problems when turning a car into a flying car? Let's first go through the problem with aerodynamics. From the very beginning of its creation, a sports car is as close to the ground as possible. Various aerodynamic body kits, spoilers, air ducts and the like are installed. And this of course helps a lot, but only when a large amount of air surrounds the car only from three sides. That is, the smallest amount of air flows through the bottom of the car. But when the car is in the air, a lot of air will pass through the bottom and accordingly the force of friction will be much increased. That is why this car is equipped with a sheet that completely covers the entire bottom and reduces aerodynamic resistance. By the way, Mercedes once had a terrible story related to a perfectly flat bottom. Remember it? Another problem is that it is very difficult to keep the car in the air. It will not have any additional traction, because the wheels are no longer touching the ground. And the car will fly simply because to the force of inertia, and as a result will simply fall to the ground. The next problem is that the car must weigh very little, and all this weight must be evenly distributed over the volume, because if this is not the case, it will be very difficult to lift the car into the air and it will be also very unstable during the flight. The fourth problem we face is that it will be very difficult for the car to develop speed for a normal takeoff. Look, with rocket boosters the car easily gains enough speed and takes off, but without them, at a certain speed it begins to climb uphill, the wheels lose the surface and the speed begins to decrease. That is, the speed is not enough to fly normally, but at the same time is too high for the wheels to have normal traction with the surface for normal acceleration of the car. So in conclusion, what can I say? To transform an ordinary racing car into a flying one, we need first, make sure that it's powerful enough, secondly, make its mass as small as possible, third, reduce downforce aerodynamics and improve body aerodynamics in general, fourth, Add car wings and tail, so that it is at least a little controlled in the air. And the fifth is to add an engine for traction in the air for the car. It can be either rocket boosters or a propeller. In short, it will be easier to buy a plane. So that's it. I hope you liked the video and learned something new for yourself. If it's so, please support this video with a like, I will be very grateful for it. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.